Hey guys, Justin here, American Mustang School. I have uh, been waiting for this show. This is a special show. It's uh, our 12th video, and it's one I've really wanted to share ever since I started the first video. Uh, I want to introduce the horses that I'm going to have help me explain this with you today. To my left is Cinnamon. Uh, she's a Mustang. And uh, Duke, to my right, he's a Mustang. The other two guys in the background, Whiskey and Peso, you've already met in future or past videos, and you'll see them in future videos. So pretty cool thing we're going to share today. And uh, I'm just so excited. I'm trying to like balance myself and relax because this is a really important law of nature to learn. Um, it's almost impossible to really ascend in the conscious level of awareness without understanding what I'm getting ready to share with you today. Uh, you might ask, why do I need to know law of gender? Why? Well, first and foremost, character development and developing a relationship with anything. You've got to understand that this law of gender exists, that these energies exist, masculine, feminine energies. Uh, they're one and the same, and as I go through this video and explain that, you'll start to understand they merge into one. They're not different. They're yes and, not either or type thing. Uh, some of the laws that we've talked about in the past, transmutation of energy, this one is a really cool way to explain laws of uh, gender. You can transmute that masculine, feminine energy back and forth. And I'm going to explain it with the underlying horsemanship, the sacred art of horsemanship. So let's just get started and uh, let me explain this to you. I'm actually explaining this to myself on this video. I do these videos for myself as kind of a document uh, going forward. So I started these series of 12 videos to explain something that I've experienced and lived, but I wanted to hear it out loud in, in words. I got curious and I hope you're curious as well. The reason is to learn this game we call life. You know, the ordinances of the heavens and the earth are the laws of nature to live by. What, what is nature keeping secret from me? I have found that these Mustang horses were kind of a gateway into nature, guides. Uh, hence my book, A Horse to Guide Me. You know, these guys help guide me into their realm, nature call it an earthly realm, but they opened up a whole new spiritual realm for me, and I want to help help you understand that. Um, these are accountability partners. They kind of hold us to a degree of understanding that we are going inward, presenting outward, creating and manifesting the life we want to experience. You know, based on our beliefs is the degree uh, that you will experience this life. So what better way to experience life than with horses uh, guiding us in nature to learn and discover these ordinances that help us on a microcosm and the macro, you know, the universe. It's a beautiful thing. So we'll get started. You, you got to just kind of think of it in beginnings and endings, but ebbs and flows are cycles. So the first video I made was a beginning, this 12th one could be the final, but I've come to understand that this is actually a beginning because it just keeps me going and getting curious and more on the path. You know, sacred art of horsemanship. I wasn't even saying that in the first videos. I'm saying it in this last one. It is sacred. It is unknown. It is being in the present, which is the unknown, but discovering. And that is a beautiful thing. Energy, let me just say, is information. So the energy transfer between horse, human, any relationship you have, human, human, um, unknown to known, unseen to seen, uh, that is information and it changes. It's not created or destroyed in a sense. It's always there. It's how we use, utilize it. And it's varying degrees of those same energies. So masculine and feminine, that is an energy. A masculine energy is kind of described as doing logic, you know, outward thinking, outward looking. Uh, feminine is more being, uh, intuitive, uh, inward looking. Uh, whatever we're thinking and doing, we're becoming. 
So that's masculine and feminine energy within ourselves that we do have. We possess these energies within ourselves as, as a human, male or female. So you got to understand masculine energy, feminine energy is more of a, a balanced energy within man and woman. Now, they can be dominant characteristics in a man or a woman or vice versa within that man or woman. When the energy is balanced, it's harmony, it's an agreement, and it's more fulfilling. And as we go through this horsemanship, the horse-human relationship, I'm going to give you the representatives of what these guys represent in the masculine-feminine energies. Uh, cinnamon, you know, she is a nurturing, intuitive, calm, quiet female horse. And she is a representative of like a mother hen, but not a, not a hen pecking type mother. She's a nurturing, kind of sets the tone of quiet. Uh, she's a very affectionate mare. And she taught me the feminine side of me. She helped me discover that feminine side within myself. Uh, by nature, or by habit, you could call it, I was very uh, energetic, not lazy, always wanting to do, go, not patient, very fast, let's get it done, let's move on to the next thing, let's learn all we can, let's go, let's go, let's go. Uh, so imbalances in this masculine and feminine can be a detriment as well. You know, too much in one energy is off balance. Uh, and that's what I was in the beginning of my horsemanship practices. You know, not being patient, being kind of aggressive, uh, forceful, forcing compliance. You know, based on traditional practices that I had been witness to, I, I tried those things. And all it did is create anger, resentment. Um, I was really getting a, a big dose of ego. And these powerful Mustang horses, you know, these are a thousand pound of muscle. If you try to force them to submit, they're going to rebel, which they should. And without going into too much detail on horse training or anything, I just discovered I had a feminine side to me thanks to this horse here. Uh, in other words, when I would try to force submission, force compliance, she would rebel, but not in a violent manner. She would just be so strong and just be. And, and then that presence in that moment would teach me like, man, I've got to find a different way. And I'll explain it this way. If I'm asking her for something, she will give it. If I'm trying to force it, she guards it. So in other words, if I had a secret in my, my hand and I balled my fist, you know, the masculine might try to break it open and get the secret out. And the feminine would probably just simply ask, can I have the secret? And then it's revealed. That's what she would do. This is the, if we want to talk about highest level of training Justin has at his school, this is a representative of it. I can ride her bareback with no bridle, just on mind-body communication, and eventually just go to mind-to-mind -to -mind communication. And we're going to talk about that in future videos and how to achieve that. But it starts with understanding these laws of nature. I did not understand these. I just had to go trial and error. Well, that's risky in a lot of ways because the game of life is how to not get hurt, how to benefit. When we have these laws of nature understood, defined for ourselves, and then we start down the path and the path gets clearer as we're on the path, having this knowledge, utilizing it to gain wisdom, they are more revealing, more open. Your mind, body, spirit complex is in balance. It's connected. You're thinking with your intellect, but you're also thinking with your heart. Heart-based consciousness is being developed. Going back to this nurturing, intuitive being, as Cinnamon, this Mustang, this wild, once wild horse that thrived in nature, invited correctly into the human element, reveals these laws of nature uh, in an experience uh, through thought and feeling of where it can manifest and become a reality. So this, this horse is a truest representative feminine energy with masculine energy balanced. And then I'll go over here to Duke. He is a assertive, dominant representative of masculinity in my horses. 
uh, he also taught me the same exact thing as she did as I would try some of these same traditional practices on him and he would rebel and he would do it violently and he was dominant. He would rear up and strike at me. I mean, he was like verbally, without saying verbally uh, language, he was physically verbally saying, stop, what you're doing is trying to force me to comply with what you think we need to do together. And then I would realize, okay, I've got to tap into a different energy or I've got to throttle back this masculine dominant energy and I've got to go inward into a feminine energy and just be. And so I would just be with him and I would brush his mane and I would give him a bath and I would trim his hooves. And then the preconceived notion of I should be riding him in 30 days just went out the door. That, that was, I mean, I rode him in 14 days, but she was three days. So it, they're all different. But utilizing these laws of nature and these understandings, I can move further faster in a harmony and balanced way, which is an agreement. And it's more of a fulfilling experience. Uh, we get depth, we raise consciousness uh, and understand ourselves much more in the relationship. So this horse, he will not tolerate heaviness, hard handed. He's, he's a very sensitive horse. So when I ride him, it's fingertip pressure on the reins. It's very light pressure on the calf muscle. And on the same opposite scale as a male female horse, she's the same way. She's very sensitive too, to where I don't need to even ride her with a bridle. She, she, when she does have a bridle, it's just fingertip pressure, leg pressure, very soft calf muscle pressure, no spurs, no bits in their mouth to force submission through pain. Hence the concepts and fundamentals of our creating the bitless bridle, the Justin Dunn bitless bridle. I, I care more about the fundamentals and concepts of what that bridle represents than the actual bridle. It's not a product, guys. That's what I'm trying to, to caution you with. It's not like you're gonna buy a magic pro product and it's gonna create this relationship for you. It aids in that, it helps. So just like in five part series, you know, the series of five questions I ask any and every horse to get to know them, that's a mantra. It's unique to, to me and this horse, to me and this horse, to this horse and another person, to this horse and another person. Those laws of nature help us define the relationship. They help us define ourselves. They help us define the horses. They help us unlock secrets in nature. And those five levels help us ascend in conscious awareness with an accountability of horses. Now, here's the bonus most beautiful beneficial piece to this equation in my opinion these guys get to ascend in consciousness so let me give you an example kind of paint a picture these are wild horses that lived in nature they did not need humans see we've been taught as humans we're separate of nature well i'm here to tell you that is not true we are nature they are nature we're in nature we're in the universe together. There are ordinances that govern the heavens and the earth, above, below, within, without. These are the principles we must understand and know in order to advance or ascend in consciousness. Well, these accountability partners get to ascend in consciousness too, because what they're thinking and doing, they're becoming, it's manifesting into a reality for them. So they get to cooperate in the ascension process. They're just fine out there eating grass, pooping on the earth, swatting flies, doing what they do, doing very well, harmonizing in nature. Well, we have been taught we're separate. We've been taught to disconnect from it. Society has taught us, programmed and conditioned us to separate from nature, not learn these laws. Why aren't these taught in school? That's what the question I have. So that's one of the things I want to share with the world is, hey, there's these laws that govern the heavens and the earth. They help us understand that we are creators. We can manifest what we think and do into a reality and attract things that we need to fulfill a life worth living. These guys, when they pick up that that's what you wanna do, they're like little promoters in it. They like, oh, we'll help you do that. We'll help you, we'll help you. We'll consistently 
daily be involved in helping you do it. And man, that's like a little motivator. That's why I call it accountability partner. So I wanted to touch on, on this law of gender and try to just paint a brief picture for you to understand. And as we go further in this, uh, hopefully it'll, it'll sink in and absorb in some way. However, I'm going to use this analogy. If you've never had conscious contact with horses, it's, it's going to be kind of probably tough to understand what I'm explaining to you in the horsemanship, horse world. It's like if you've never had chocolate ice cream and I tried to tell you on a video what it's like, like I'm going to tell you that it's cold, it's not hot, you know, law of contrast, um, you know, polarity, the contrast between them. You wouldn't really understand that. You, you, unless you've had conscious contact with cold, something cold and something hot, I could say, well, ice cream's really cold. When it hits your lips, it's cold, and, and your tongue, it's sweet. And if you've never had that, you wouldn't really understand. So that's my point I'm trying to make is in horsemanship, if you've not had conscious contact with these beautiful, breathing, thinking, loving, light beings as they are, it's going to be, it's going to be a little difficult to understand. But I will tell you, if you've read my book, you can practice all of these laws of nature with horses. I learned them with them. They taught me them. Uh, my book, A Horse to Guide Me, is essentially that. And in the book, I try to explain, which are words, they just point you to an understanding, but try to explain through conscious contact with these horses, I actually get to practice the laws of nature in nature with the horses. So it's a beautiful experience. And that's what I try to bring you in this video. So you guys wait right here. I gotta flip my notes here. And then we're going to uh, continue forward. Aren't they just patient little loving beings? I love you guys. Okay, so I, I wanna share some personal things with you um, to give you kind of a, a background and understanding of where we are today. Because what we've been thinking and doing, we are the, the total sum of that right here, right now. You know, I'm standing here with two beautiful horses I've had with me for over a decade, and uh, him almost almost two decades. So it's it's one of the things where when you develop a relationship, that relationship can change. That's that's why you see divorce happen. You know, energies change. Masculine, feminine are off balance. Laws of nature aren't even known, much less practiced. Uh, this transfers over into all areas of your life, your health, your wealth, your relationships, your happiness, your spirituality. It's all interconnecting. That energy, masculine and feminine energy, when it's balanced within ourselves, you will have a superpower. Because in times of need, in each relationship you ever encounter, because I've encountered thousands with people and many thousands with horses, each horse is different. Each person is different. It's at different levels of understanding, different time frames, different pathways, different perspectives, different perceptions. These laws of nature help us define that, yeah, on any one thing, there's 360 degrees around that one thing. So there's all these, you know, we broke it down into 360 perspectives of that one thing. So what I'm here to tell you is, we're trying to learn the game of life. We're trying to learn how to love and be loved. When I'm in harmony and balance with this horse, I feel love, she feels love. When I'm in harmony and balance with this horse, he feels love, I feel love. He understands what it's like to be loved because I'm loving him, so he understands love. That's an ascension in consciousness for these beings. It's ascension in consciousness for me. So I've been married almost 28 years to the same woman, Christina, my wife. I'm, I'm so attracted to her for her feminine energy, nurturing, loving, caring, motherly energy to my children. I watched her raise my children to, to still my grandchildren, but to still to this day, my, my actual children. And she has shown me kind of in the same way this horse showed me. I have a feminine energy that I need to tap into to become a better person, to be better at the game of life, to harmonize or agree in nature. It is a something that is so important. Words really don't do it justice unless you have conscious contact with it and you go down the path of discovery. 
you, you think and you do and you become. So I am masculine dominant, I know that. Ever since a small child, age five and on, as far as I can remember, masculine dominant, love to go, love to do, and that could get off balance. You know, workaholic, you've ever heard of that? I loved to work, almost to a fault. Like I would rather do that than anything else. And I would get frustrated, you know, I'd be standing in a line thinking this is such a waste of time, I could be doing something productive. But then I, I call on that feminine energy, I transmute that, go inward, breathe in, release all that, we could call it negative energy, but we could call it overly masculine energy to where it's like, yeah, let's just, um, let's just be. In horsemanship, we do what's called grooming for mindset. And that's just a quick way to say, hey, we're going to balance our mind, our body, our spirit, and we're going to present it to the horse. But sometimes we're just being with the horse. We're calling on that feminine energy to just be. You know, I got these guys asked them to ground tie these little ropes. These horses are powerful. They could run off with these ropes. But when we're in harmony and a balance, agreement, you know, these, these guys are, are like, visual aids that we're in harmony and balance. If they're standing here ground tied on a lead rope, they're telling me visually, reflection in their body, what they're thinking. They're like, yeah, we're, we're relaxed, we're cool, we can do this. Now they may start wiggling or doing something and that's a reflection in their body that's the energy's changing. So I either got to balance that energy out or I've got to go with what it is. You know, it, it's, it's one of those things that we're not forcing compliance, we're not, interrupting or obstructing these these living beings ourselves or them we're flow state we're moving in harmony and balance we have a skill we have experience we approach challenges in a level way balanced way so as people understanding these laws of nature because horses do we we build a life together you know people build lives together Horses build a life together in a herd. You know, they have mastermind meetings. They are synergistically connected. You know, they, they understand all these laws so well that it would be a detriment to break them. They would realize that's, that's futile and foolish to break these laws, these ordinances that govern the heavens and the earth. So they want to ascend consciously. You know, it's rigged in our favor to learn the laws, practice them, abide in them, and then go forth and prosper. You know, ascending consciously, you know, the law of gender is understood. You know, both energies are the same. They, they come from the one. Uh, I like to refer to as Yah, the Hebrew word for one, almighty one, infinite intelligence. You can describe it however you want. They're the same. You know, in, in Genesis 1, 26 and 27 in the Bible, there's a, there's a verse, and it says, uh, let us make man in our image. And I always thought, well, there's just he. You know, they always refer to he. You know, they'll, they'll say he. And it's like, okay, well, what about the she? You know, where's that come into play? Well, when I read that scripture, I was like, let us, meaning more than one, make man in our, meaning more than one, image. And then I thought, well, that's, okay, that's masculine, feminine energy which are the same, which is one, the two become one. So we do a practice in horsemanship called meditation. And man, that can be described in a bunch of ways, but I'm gonna explain it this way. It's an open eye meditation. Basically going, with, going in and presenting out, observing feedback from the horse, making changes, doing it again, in a harmony, in a balance, in the law of rhythm. All these things come into play. It's an eye-open meditation. We get quiet, whether we're riding, we're not talking, we're getting quiet. We're getting in a feedback loop with nature, with the horse, with nature. Yes, we are. <clears throat> Grooming. If I'm thinking and doing and becoming just in the act of grooming a horse, getting quiet, it's a meditation. My eyes are open, but I'm going inward, presenting outward, touching reflections in her body, which tell me what her mind what's thinking. You know, I want to free up restrictions in her mind of tension, mental tension. I don't want any doubt, confusion, anxiety. 
I want free and open energy transfer mind to mind. And then in her heart, same thing. I don't want to provide tension in her mind, which transfers into her body and restricts the body, tension in the body, which her heart starts beating out of rhythm, you know, tense, restricted. Muscles are tensing up. Breathing is short and shallow. I don't want that. I don't want that in myself and I don't want that in her. So what we'll do is an eye open meditation. We draw on these energies, these feminine and masculine energies, balance them. Have I been too aggressive, too going too strong like I naturally do in my character? They're gonna tell me. Have I, have I not? Have I got off balance maybe in the feminine where I'm doing nothing? I'm, I'm, I need to do something. Well, they'll tell me. And it's not a good or bad label. It's just an awareness to ascend consciously. It's like, oh, become aware. That's your conscious ascension. Am I loving this horse? Am I loving myself and presenting love? Am I allowing her to be loved? Am I holding her in judgment for something? Which is in turn holding myself in judgment. Like I'm judging her because X, Y, Z. I'm actually just judging myself because I'm presenting what I'm thinking. You know, I hope this is making sense. Because without conscious contact with horses, or other people that are willing to, you know, play the game of life with you, actively doing and receiving the two becoming one. Uh, it's difficult to understand. It's like the chocolate ice cream analogy. I want to try to paint a picture of this way too. There's a spiritual realm and there's a material realm as above, so below. So, you think of a king or a queen in the spiritual realm, masculine, feminine. We've been in the material king and queen, and we kind of understand that pretty easy. And let's look at it in the spiritual light. So, like a king is authority over, maybe not over, but authority for land. Uh, a queen would be authority for people, give power to the people. Uh, authority to give power to the land. Um, that's the best way to try to understand it in the spiritual uh, side of things. Because whenever I think of it in horsemanship, and I want to be mind, body, spirit, complex, balanced, I want to be giver, receiver, uh, a lover, be loved, and I want to actively do these things together to enrich our lives. Uh, there has to be a benefit. There has to be a purpose. And sometimes it's not real clear, but when you start down the path, it becomes clear. And then you realize we're not separate. We're all one. We're connected so deep, interconnected so well, uh, when we learn and abide these laws of nature, we reach a, well, they'll call it Christ consciousness, but we, we, will really, we will reach a conscious level in this kingdom, in the spiritual kingdom, <laughs> that uh, you can actually pull down and, and experience. And I won't say pull down, but I'll draw in and experience. That's, that's a better word, better way to describe it. And in your, when you're in that, man, all the world is right. These horses have shown me, like, Justin, if you'll get in that state of being, we'll call it, uh, we can harmonize with you all day long, no matter what. We can help you do whatever it is you want to do. We did a camp for children with cancer. They helped. We've done programs for the military here in North Carolina. They helped. And they help in ways I can't train them to do. You know, and I, I slow down and stress saying that because I started out as thinking I was a horse trainer. Well, now I've come to understand that no, I'm not above these guys. I'm not below these guys. I'm with these guys uh, in, in equality. Uh, we, we all have a space to occupy and it's it's a deserving, well-deserved space to occupy. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. You either. Uh, anyone who is here watching this video, absorbing this information, there is a value. There is a purpose. These laws of nature will help find it, discover it.
you know, in my book, I explain five part series, series of five questions I'll ask. And I stress ask each and every horse I come into contact with. I get a deeper understanding of that horse when I do it. They get a deeper understanding of me. The beautiful part is I get a deeper understanding of myself. They get a deeper understanding of themselves in this relationship. It is a microcosm relationship in the macrocosm. You know, it's me, horse, tiny little objects interacting, transferring energy that resonates through the universe. And unless you've had conscious contact with it, it's tough to understand and it's really tough to explain. However, I hope this has sparked some sort of an interest or curiosity and you can explore these ordinances that govern the, uh, the heaven and the earth, the, the, the spiritual and the material. They're all the same. It's one. It's just varying degrees of that one. And I love that, guys. And I love to be able to share that. And I want you to be able to build a life worthy of living. And whatever you're learning, share it. Because what's the point of learning it and keeping it and just whatever? Because I'm here to tell you, I'm speaking from experience. Horses have taught me it's easier for me to forget what I'm discovering than it is to remember it. So write it down, contemplate on it, ponder on it, keep it in the frontlets of your mind, and uh, you will attract more of the streamlined meat of the information you need. And that's what's really cool because it's efficient, it's effective, long-term sustainability. It's not forced or taken, it's freely given, it's freely accepted. And then whenever you live a life of breathing in, breathing out, you know, taking, receiving, giving. It's, it's a continuous uh, cycle of abundance. There's just more going to flow in. Uh, more than you, your cup is will run over. More than you could ever need. But whenever you freely give information with no restraints, it comes to you with no restraints. It is a beautiful experience. So hopefully this helps you. It was one of my videos I really wanted to make really great because these two energies are powerful. And uh, they're the, the last one, last video I'm gonna make on laws of nature, describing them in depth. As we go forward, I will be talking about each one when they arise uh, on the pathway of where we're going next. And uh, look forward to sharing more videos. We're gonna talk about sacred laws of uh, or the sacred art of horsemanship, and these laws are part of this. You know, horses are a magnificent accountability partner. Uh, I'm so thankful. That's probably why almost every culture has drawn them on a cave wall or talked about them, uh, especially the Bible represents uh, horses in there a whole bunch of times. And um, yeah, happy to be sharing that with you. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, help it grow. Um, check out the affiliate link in the comments. That's going to get you discounts on horse products from my sponsor, Weaver Leather. Uh, they're a great company, make great products. Uh, they make my Justin Dunn bitless bridle. Uh, again, I created that product to help me discover more depth, not obstruct or force compliance in my horses, and uh, kind of protect them from other people that are unknowingly uh, utilizing equipment incorrectly. Uh, there's a large margin of error with the bitless bridle because they don't put a metal bit in their mouth, force pain to submit and obstruct what it is we're trying to build in this relationship. So uh, yeah, all of the things that you ever want to discover are in these laws of nature and whatever it is you're doing, they do matter. So uh, thank you, Cinnamon and Duke for helping me with the show today. Until next time, guys, bye-bye.